Christ's coming. We light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. We light this candle in hope. We light this candle for peace. We light this candle in joy. We light this candle with love. Please rise in body or in spirit to the call of worship. Responsibly from Bullock. From Bethlehem shall come forth the one who will rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. He shall stand and keep his lot in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. They shall live secure. For he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be one. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. God has helped us according to the promise God made. The Lord's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. Let us pray the opening prayer. God of hope, God of peace, God of joy, and God of love, teach us how to love one another as reflections of your life in the world. God of promise, God of love, in his heart shall come. Amen. Now let us join in the opening hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 121.
prophetess Micah tells us that the one of peace will come from Bethlehem. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of our Savior, let us together confess our sins and set ourselves, ourselves on Christ's path. Soon we will celebrate the Christ of peace, but we are not a people at peace. We glorify violence and dismiss the past as we We dominate and demean our conversations and relationships. We wage war with our enemies and invest in self-defense without careful regard of the consequences or the cost of violent strategies. Lord, forgive us. Help us work toward your peaceable kingdom, where the spirits will be beaten into plowshares and spirits into green books. Amen. Hear the words of the prophet Micah, and he will stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, and they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. I now invite any children to come forward as we sing the chorus of hymn number 100, My Soul Cries Out with a Joyful Shout. Sound good? All right, let's pray. 
Loving God, we thank you again for the gift of Jesus. We thank you for the gift of our friends and family and church who can talk to us and talk with us when we have questions or worries or big joys to share. Help us to remember this community. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Let's sing all of him number one. Verses 39 through 45. 
In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Elizabeth. 
I wonder if she was practicing and reciting a speech that she was going to give Elizabeth. Did she nervously hum Hannah's song, the song Hannah prayed when she gave birth to Samuel, the song from the Hebrew scriptures that must have been familiar to Mary? Or did she hold her belly and listen a little closer to her body to miss any sign of change within her? And I love imagining the whole scene between Elizabeth and Mary happening right in the threshold of Elizabeth's door frame, out in the open, urgently, and not in the intimacy of a living room over coffee. The two women holding each other's crisis and joy, proclaiming the greatness of the Lord. In the door frame, with her hands on Mary's hips, why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? asks Elizabeth, old and aged and pregnant, when her younger cousin, Mary, unmarried, arrives knowing that she will birth the Messiah. Why has this happened to me? Have you ever found yourself asking this question? Not only in response to crisis, so that's definitely an appropriate time to raise the question, but also in response to a fortunate event, life-changing, the receiving of a blessing. Maybe you haven't asked of quite these words. Maybe you've asked, what did I do to deserve this? Or is this real life? I don't say this simply to charm you all, Trinity, but I found myself with these same thoughts over the last couple of months of being here in Starkville. How did I get to embrace a call like this one? How did everything fall into place as it has? How did I end up with a choir that will practice a new to them hymn simply because I said I liked it two weeks ago? I know, just as Elizabeth knew, that the quick answer, the easy answer here, is that God, God is involved and in charge. I ask these questions almost in a manner of disbelief. And then, last weekend, I got to show all of you off to my family. I watched from up here in the pulpit as you lovingly approached my parents and my sister and my friends. I did what Josh's installation sermon referred to, the prompting of, tell that story about, to my parents. And I had late night chats with my sister and friends about their lovely interactions with y'all. I felt the warmth and stirring of the spirit among us as we were together. My questions of why has this happened to me were quickly met with reassurance that this this ministry, it is truly happening, that I really am ministering with some of the warmest people, that this is our call together, and that this is where we all are supposed to be. It was this return to relationships with people who have known me long before I was here. It was return to relationships with people who have the same job title as minister, the return to the intimacy of friendship. That is what helped me further recognize my vocation. Mary, with haste, set out and journeyed to a Judean town where her cousin Elizabeth lived. If anyone could understand, surely it would be Elizabeth. Because I imagine Mary had also asked a few hundred times, why has this happened to me? Dr. Kwok Kui Lan, a post-colonial theologian, reflects on this morning's text by writing a letter from Mary to Elizabeth. The letter is meant to occur after this morning's encounter, but before the birth of Jesus. In Mary's voice, Kwok writes, You were the first one I wanted to talk to after the angel visited, for I needed your advice. I still remember that you were almost six months pregnant and your baby bump was showing. I wanted to know what it was like being pregnant since I'm young and have no experience. And you were so glad to see me. Even the baby leaped in your womb when I greeted you. You told me not to be afraid and blessed me and said that our children would grow up healthy and resilient and become leaders of our people. Your blessings really gave me strength and I knew that I would be all right. 
Elizabeth recognized Mary and the role that she was now playing in the story of our covenantal God. She recognized and announced that Mary was carrying their Lord in her womb. And what did that lead to? It led to this beautifully poetic and prophetic response from Mary. Is this the embrace in the doorframe? Is this not the first gathering of the early church? The word is proclaimed, prayers are spoken and sung. It is done in community and not in isolation. A similar sort of gathering will happen later this afternoon as we sing carols in our friends' doorways, helping one another recognize the power and mercy of God. One of my favorite pieces of Christian art is done by my friend, the Reverend Laura Wright Pittman. It is called Mary and Elizabeth. I still remember the day when I walked into a coffee shop in Decatur, Georgia, in which her art was hanging and I saw this piece in person for the first time. I was in awe and couldn't stop staring at the warmth and tenderness between the two women. So sorry, I don't have a copy to show you right now, but I have already posted it in the Facebook group, and it'll be in this week's newsletter for your viewing. But here is what Lauren's artist statement about the piece says. I wanted to depict the creative energy, communication, and power that was taking place in Mary and Elizabeth's wombs in this moment. Mary's womb swirls with the knitting together of the one through whom all things came into being, while Elizabeth's womb radiates joy with the weeping of the one who will spend his life directing attention, awe, and reverence to the one in Mary's womb. When we draw near to one another, we can recognize and proclaim God's moment, movement in one another's lives and to be encouraged in our own journey. When we draw near to one another, we live more fully into who we were created to be. The recognition of my gifts being cohesive with this congregation's gifts and the recognition of our mutual life together the recognition that came from my family and friends last weekend filled my cup and has left me encouraged to respond to my vocation in a faithful way. Because of our drawing near, I am able to live more fully into this call. And I have already heard countless stirring stories from you all about times when you were each other's first people to visit, when you were each other's distant cousin Elizabeth when you either went with haste to someone who would just get it, or you opened your door to see Mary meeting you. I hope that you will keep drawing near to one another and see the strength that it will bring. <clears throat> and if you haven't found that connection with another person or group who truly sees you in the connection that we all need, I hope you stick with us. And I hope you will be, I hope we all will be more honest and vulnerable about our questions and our needs and our joys. I hope that we'll be more comfortable with the vulnerability that leads to laughter, weeping, and prophetic song. Dr. Kwok's letter from Mary to Elizabeth goes on to say, and then, Elizabeth, you allowed me to stay with you during my first months of pregnancy, taking such tender care of me. I wish other women would have such generous support from their female relatives and friends when they endure trying times. My prayer, dear friends, is that all of us would have such generous support from our relatives and friends and church when we endure trying times. All praise be to the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. During the season of Advent, our affirmation of faith is from the hymn of the Father's Love Begotten, number 108, which we sing in verse each week. Um, I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we say the first number Glory. 
crises and wanderings, know that this community is here for you and we welcome and meet you. And now I invite us to sing our hymn of response, number 127.
traveling mercies for everybody coming home.
after the Christmas Eve service, if you'd like. However, there is a memorial service for Judette Fudge, one of the founding members of Trinity Presbyterian on Tuesday, the 29th. And if you would like, you may leave your poinsettia and pick it up after the 29th. Thank you. Well, last time I checked, we are still in need of one more Christmas Eve reader. You only have to read a few verses and you can volunteer any um, family who's visiting in town. You don't have to get the number to get up here and read scripture. Uh, so let me know if that interests you. Uh, we also, this morning, give thanks uh, to Carol Funday, who has for far too long um, been the person recording our worship services. Um, as she looks forward to a uh, well-earned sabbatical, we also continue to look for folks to help. We have had one volunteer, but I don't think this should be a thing where one person is in charge every single Sunday. Uh, so let Carol or myself know if maybe this is something you'd like to learn how to do. Um, Tuesday evening at 6.30, we'll be hosting a blue Christmas worship service. It'll be a contemplative service here in the sanctuary, a time for lament and hope and healing together, um, certainly a time for uh, seeing one another as Mary and Elizabeth saw each other. And then of course Christmas Eve is on Friday. We will have a candlelight and communion worship service at 6 o'clock p.m. One more. Uh, thank you everybody for adopting our Christmas families. This season, we were able to adopt five families, which I think is over 20 individuals, uh, through folks adopting as well as through financial donations. Uh, I invite you to join myself and Shay and Allison tomorrow at 1 o'clock here at the church if you'd like to help deliver these gifts. Please rise in body or spirit to receive the blessing. Friends, magnify God the Creator. Magnify God the Redeemer. Magnify God the Sustainer in your life and the life of others. And may God bless you and keep you and encourage you this Sunday and forevermore. Amen.